Right now to the latest out of Washington this afternoon. That's where some new text messages between the Trump White House and the wife of a Supreme Court justice have been uncovered this week. We've been closely following as well the Supreme Court confirmation hearings. Joining us this afternoon is CBS News chief political analyst and senior national correspondent John Dickerson, who will actually moderate Face the Nation coming up this weekend. John, thanks for being here. Good to see you. I know that this uh, report from CBS News and the Washington Post that came out this week about these texts between former President Trump's chief of staff and the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas getting a lot of attention right now. What really stands out to you about this? It's good to be with you, Mark. Well, let's go up to 30,000 feet. One of the challenges for the Supreme Court that Chief Justice John Roberts worries about is that people will think the court is political, that the justices there don't vote based on the merits of the law, but they vote based on political opinions and whims. One of the ways the court can beat back that idea is if individual justices, when there comes an issue where they have a personal co connection with what's happening with a case before them or with an area of law before them, if they have a personal connection, they recuse themselves so that their personal interests don't bleed over and get in the way of, of doing their job. That's what's at stake here, that you had Justice Thomas's wife had this deep passion for overturning the, the election, which is demonstrated in these text messages, which are not just, oh, wouldn't it be neat to do this. It is a, a very zesty set of test me text messages in which she is deeply, deeply passionate about overturning the election. So the question is, should, should Justice Thomas, with the, the uh, reputation of the court in mind, have recused himself when a case came up before the court about January 6th, or just any case? That's really the biggest question at stake here. Obviously, this is one of many revelations from the January 6th committee. What, what's the larger story here people need to keep in mind? So much information is, is coming out. Obviously, a lot more is happening behind the scenes. What, what's really the next chapter here for their investigation? That's right. The key thing for people to keep in mind is new information requires context. I mean, new information is fascinating because it fills out the picture of the first attack on the Capitol since 1814. But what does it really mean in, in a larger context? And the big thing to keep in mind here is where were the failures on January 6th? Who was involved with with plotting and planning the insurrection? Was it just a bunch of people who happened to come together or was there planning from within the White House? The, the committee has suggested that President Trump was involved in a possible criminal conspiracy to overthrow the election. That's a pretty heavy charge. Then the question is on the day when it started happening, the police and military response, why was it so poor? And then also what was going on inside the White House? The committee has a lot of information about what happened when uh, the riot started, was, was declared a riot, what was President Trump doing for the 180 minutes between when the glass started breaking and when he finally said something? Uh, and what was his inner circle doing? So those are all questions that will come out sometime during the spring. A, t a date hasn't been set. There will be an interim report, which will be read, and then there will probably, or there will also be some hearings at some time in the spring, early summer. Well, I know you're also going to talk this Sunday, and I do want to ask you briefly, we don't have a lot of time, but do you anticipate uh, Judge Katanji Brown-Jackson being appointed to the Supreme Court? You think this is going to fall?